Hey, and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to learn all about the counter object in the Python Collections module. Let's get started. So let's talk a little bit about what you'll learn today. First, we're going to cover off what the counter class actually is, how the counter class and why the counter class improves upon other methods of counting objects, how to find the most and least common items in a collection, how to add and subtract counter objects, and how to update them as well. So let's dive right in. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is take a look at what the counter class actually is. And in order to do this, we first need to import it. So we can write uh, from collections import counter. So when we run this now, we now have access to the counter class. So let's create our first counter object. We can do this just by writing this. And then we'll print it out just to kind of see what it looks like when it's empty. So we can see here that it's returned an empty counter object. We can take a look at what this type actually is by using the type function. So we can type, uh, we can write out type of counts, and this returns that it's a collections.counter object. Now, one of the things that I really want to point out here is that it's actually subclass to the regular Python dictionary. This is great because dictionaries are very familiar Python data structures, and we can use these to actually be able to access different counts within them. However, they also build on the Python dictionary in quite a lot of different ways. But before we dive into that, let's take a look at how we can actually confirm that the counter class is really a subclass of the Python dictionary. We can do this by using the isSubclass function, and we're going to pass in counter and the dictionary here. So we can see here that this actually returns true, meaning that the counter class is a subclass of a dictionary. So before we really take a look at how to use the counter object, let's take a look at how we generally count items. So imagine that we have a string that says something like, hey there, welcome to this video. And we wanted to create a dictionary that had all of the counts in that string per letter. So the way that we could do this is by having um, a new dictionary here, and then we'll write over for each item in that string. And we'll first do a check whether or not that item already exists. If it does, we add one to our count. So if item in counts dict, then we would do counts dict of item plus equals one. If it doesn't exist, we need to first instantiate that key value pair. So we can write else counts dict of item equals one. So let's see what this looks like now. So what we have here are actually the different values or the different iterable parts or characters in our string each split out as the key of our dictionary and the value is how often that particular character exists in our string. So just by looking at this, we can kind of take a glance, see that the spaces are the most common uh, as well as the letter E, um, but it's not really the most intuitive way. It's a little bit drawn out in terms of actually writing this. So. How can we improve upon this? And the easiest way to do that is to use the counter object. So say now we want to create just counts using the counter object. All we need to do actually is pass in that iterable string. So when we run this, and then let's print this out, we can see that we really get that exact same dictionary returned. However, you can see here that it's actually a counter object, but we do know that that's actually a subclass of a regular Python dictionary. So let's see what else we can really do with this. So in this case, we passed in a string, but in many cases, you're not really interested in necessarily counting the characters of a string. So you can even pass in lists, you can pass in tuples, you can pass in really any hashable and iterable object. So let's take a look at passing in a string. So counts list, and we're going to create a new counter object here, and we'll pass in a list just with different numbers in it. 
So when we now take a look at this, we can see that each of the values in here is returned as its own key. And the value for that corresponding key is the number of times that value appears in that. We can do the same thing for tuples. So let's take a look here and we're just gonna reuse the same list, but change it to be a tuple. So in this case, it returned the exact same counter object because all we did was change it to a tuple. So now that we have this covered off, let's take a look at some of the other features that we can use with the counter class. So for this, I'm just gonna paste in a list here. So let's imagine that we're running this animal shelter here and we wanna be able to take a look at how many of each type of animal we have in our shelter. We can do this by creating um, a, a counter object where we pass in this animals list. So let's do, um, animal counts and we'll create a new counter object and we'll just pass in our list here. So we can print it out here too uh, and see that, okay, we have six dogs, we have two cats, but what if we just wanted to know how many dogs we have? Because this is a subclass of a dictionary, we can actually access that key. So we can do this either by writing uh, dog or uh, well, first let's run this so we can see we have six dogs or we can use the get method. And so the get method is actually really great in the sense that it doesn't return a key, er key error if a key doesn't exist in that dictionary. So when we run this, we get the exact same thing. However, because a counter class is built around being able to count objects, intuitively, if we say wanted to know how many bunnies we had, um, we don't want this counter object returning a key error if we have no bunnies. We want it to be able to return zero. And this is actually built directly into the counter class. It overrides that missing argument. And so if we now just write animal counts and we access it without the get function, we just access the key directly, it returns zero. So this is actually incredibly helpful if we really just want to write safe code that, where we don't have to write try or if statements or think about whether or not account doesn't exist yet. Because the, the entire class is built around counting objects, intuitively, if an item doesn't exist, it should return zero. Okay, so one of the other great things about this class is being able to find the most common items. And so this is what I was referring to when I mentioned that the counter class really extends upon uh, the, the regular Python dictionary. So say we have our animal counts here and we want to be able to return the most common items. So for that, we can use the really aptly named most common method. So when we print this out, we actually get a list of tuples here. So it doesn't return a dictionary any, anymore, but it's a sorted list in descending order from the highest counts to the least. And so this is a little bit, um, uh, unintuitive for a lot of beginners where they think, okay, I'm passing in a method called most common. Why is it returning all of the items? So the way that we can work around this is actually by accessing the index of that item. So in this case, if we wanted to access the most common item in that list or in, yeah, in that list, then we can access the zeroth index. So when we do this, we can see that the most amount of items in our collection are dogs with six of them there. So if we wanted to just access the key that has the most values in it, we would simply need to access the zeroth index of that zeroth index. So when we run this, we just return the string dog. If we only care about the most common item. We can actually specify that as a parameter. So what we can write is we can say animal counts most common and then say we only cared about the most common item. We can pass in one here. So when we run this, it still returns a list of tuples. However, it only contains that single tuple with the most common item in it. So now when we want to access it, we still do need to access its first index, which returns that tuple. And if we wanted to return the item or the, the key for it, we again access the zeroth index of that tuple, which returns dog. So intuitively, we may actually be interested in finding the least common item as well. Uh, there's no corresponding least common method. 
However, because we've returned an ordered list, we're able to just access the least common item by accessing the last index. So say we wanted to do uh, this exact same thing. We can just take that code here and access the last index by using the negative indexing. So this, in this case, would return that we only have one goldfish in our animal shelter. Similarly, if we just wanted to access the key for that, we could again access the zeroth index for that and see we have the fewest goldfish in our shelter without knowing how many we have. So now to close this off, let's take a look at some other things that we can do with counter objects. So the first thing that we'll take a look at is actually being able to update these counts. So uh, let's keep going with our animal shelter example. We have all of our counts in this object here, and we wanna be able to say, okay, we had another day of intake, we got another two dogs and a cat and a bunny. So rather than recreating the entire list from scratch, we can actually use the update method here and then pass in a list of the new animals that we received. So we have two dogs, a cat and a bunny. So let's close off this list and then we'll print out our counts. So we can see here, whereas before we had six dogs, now we have eight. We also have the bunny now and an additional cat. We can actually also delete items from our accounts directly by using the del keyword. So if we say no longer had any cats and we wanted to be able to remove it, remove the key value pair for cats entirely, we could simply write del uh, animal counts and passing cat here. Now, when we access this, we can see that cats are no longer in our shelter at all. Another interesting way that we can work with counters is not by passing in an iterable object. We can actually create them directly by declaring the key value pairs that we want to use. So say that we wanted to uh, create this new animal counts too. Uh, what we can do is actually pass in the arguments directly here. So again, if we say wanted to follow along with the animal shelter method, let's say we have another shelter where we have three dogs, we have uh, three cats and this one will have a lot of goldfish. We'll just give them 15 here. So now when we print this out, let's take a look at what happens here. We actually return the exact same thing as if we passed in uh, any iterable thing like a list or a tuple. However, we were able to be a bit more explicit about what we wanted these keys to be. Now. In terms of being able to work with multiple counter objects, it's my, it might be that you know uh, you have one counter object here and another counter here, and you want to be able to merge them together. We can actually add these animal counts together in order to be able to create a single one out of them. So we can create a new one here called total, and we'll have our animal counts, and we'll have our second one here too. So now when we print out total, it actually gives us the sum of all of these items here. It doesn't matter at all if a key didn't exist in another uh, counter object or it, uh, there's that overlap. It just adds them together neatly and as you would expect. So let's take a look at two more quick things here. The first one is actually being able to use uh, the ampersand or the and operator here. So what this does is actually quite interesting. So let's take a look at, I'm just gonna print out animal counts here and print out the second one here so we can see what we're working with here. Um, actually print out the second one. So now let's write animal counts and animal counts two. So what this does is it looks at the intersection of the different keys and returns the minimum between these two counts. And if you think about this intuitively a little bit, that actually makes a lot of sense. It says, what is common between these two, what's the minimum common between these? Now, another interesting thing that we can do is actually use the pipe operator, which in this case refers to the or. So when we do this, it actually returns the maximum value for each of the keys, regardless of whether or not they exist in either of the two uh, counter classes. So when we run this, we can see that instead of returning three dogs, because that was the minimum, it returned eight. and while one animal counts uh, class uh, object didn't have any bunnies, 
that didn't matter. It still included it here because it used that OR operator. So I hope you really enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please leave a comment, hit the like button and consider subscribing. I'm gonna have a lot more content about the collections uh, module coming up in the next coming weeks. So stay tuned for that. And thanks so much for watching. Have a great day.